Depleted uranium was found in Gaza victims of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict of 2009. This weapon is still a relevant threat to the world today. Battlefields and fighting are by nature hazardous to your health. Some hazards are easy to identify and well understood. Soldiers recognize the serious hazards presented by incoming artillery shells and Thanks. more appropriate actions. However, some lesser hazards from new technological applications are not so well known and recognized. And equipment armor. Depleted uranium is radioactive waste manufactured as a weapon that was used to protect U.S. troops and decimate Iraqi forces during Operation Desert Storm. From their conceptions, the dangers of mass use were clear. Despite gruesome after effects, their innovative advantages are still used today. After a series of cover-ups and lies, the secret weapon of the United States is brought to light. When depleted uranium shells hit a target, they penetrate and some particles catch a flame. This leaves a dust that will pass through gas masks, protective clothing, and set on the earth. Lauren Moret, an environmental scientist, studied the power of atmospheric dust to travel around the world through dissipation in the atmosphere. The main centers of these dust storms are the Gobi Desert in China which is where the Chinese did atmospheric testing, so that's all contaminated with radiation. And it gets transported right over Japan, and it comes straight across the Pacific. Ethical use of weapons holds that they must be used to solve conflicts and only target soldiers. Lauren Moret states that, The half-life of depleted uranium, uranium-238, is 4.5 billion years. What that means is that billions of years after depleted uranium was shot at Iraqi tanks in Operation Desert Storm, civilians who had never heard of this conflict will pay the price. As for the rest of the world, the small dust-like particles that form after DU penetration combine with various dusts and will dissipate into the atmosphere. These DU particles will eventually be deposited onto the land and water, where they will poison life and irradiate regions. Their so-called localized use during Operation Desert Storm, and more recently in the War on Terror, does not remotely support an isolated incident scenario. For the Gulf, the area with the most concentrated depleted uranium waste, the effects are clear. Birth defects, cancers, and genetic disease are common. If depleted uranium use continues, global levels of radioactive dust will continue to rise, and the outlook will not be good. It's going to kill off the world's population. It already is. And it doesn't just affect people. It affects all living systems, the plants, the animals, the bacteria, it affects everything. The story of depleted uranium begins with General Groves, a member of the Manhattan Project during World War II. He wrote a memo to committees and subcommittees of Congress on the use of depleted uranium. Groves even speculated on enemy use of the substance, what he would perceive as unethical. Against large cities to promote panic and create casualties among civilian populations to contaminate small critical areas such as railroad yards and airports. As a terrain contaminant, the radioactive materials will be spread on the ground from the air if in enemy controlled territory. As a gas warfare instrument, the material will be ground into particles of microscopic size and would be distributed in the form of dust or smoke or dissolved in liquid. The amounts of necessary to cause death to a person inhaling the material is extremely small. In a 2003 report from the Department of Defense to the Secretaries of the Army, Navy, and Air Force, the Army stated basic information about depleted uranium. Personnel in, on, or near an armored vehicle when the vehicle is being penetrated by depleted uranium may internalize depleted. The United States fired tens of thousands of these rounds during the Gulf War alone. These were fired often in civilian zones, and that 50 meter spread has undoubtedly contaminated innocence. The primary concern of depleted uranium to the Army is in heavy metal poisoning. Heavy metal poisoning may occur, which can cause damage to internal organs and tissues. A possible long-term hazard from depleted uranium dust is contamination of the ground. Combined with the evidence that the Army has compiled, a substance that causes heavy metal poisoning alone is too dangerous to allow anywhere near civilians. Years before these weapons had been manufactured, General Groves had an understanding of their harmful capability. And yet, they were still used. The Army lied to its own soldiers on their return home. Why? Why lie to the veterans that fought for their country? Jerry Wheat was driving a four-man Bradley tank through a fierce battle zone in Iraq when it was hit by a tank shell. My whole body was pretty much smoking. 
that's when the second round struck. I could feel myself getting hit with shrapnel in the back of the head and back. Sometime later, army medics would remove that shrapnel from his body. Wheat's general told him that his Bradley was hit by an Iraqi tank. Wheat and his squad lived off rations in that damaged tank for four more days. They were all coated with DU. No one had ever mentioned DU except to say that we were firing it. We were told not to worry. They said, it won't hurt you. It's depleted. It was on your hands, your food. We didn't even think about it. We were just happy to be alive. The army even refused to acknowledge the use of depleted uranium to their own soldiers. Herbert Reed was deployed to the Gulf in 2003 and started to develop serious symptoms of radiation poisoning. He later discovered that an abandoned railroad yard that his unit had housed in was bombed during Operation Desert Storm and was contaminated with depleted uranium. His unit asked then to be tested for something to explain their symptoms. They said there was no test for depleted uranium and that we had nothing to worry about. Just leave it alone. In that same year, the Army sent out a clinician report to U.S. medics around the world for information about depleted urine bioassay to assess exposure to be performed if feasible. Reed and his soldiers were afraid that they might be deteriorating, and the Army was told to test them. However, the United States chose to decline their treatment. The Army didn't want to believe that they were giving cancer to their soldiers, and thus the conspiracy began. One of the main alternatives to depleted uranium is tungsten, another alloy of high penetrating metal. The Army conducted their own studies over the debate between these alloys, a comparison of the advantages and disadvantages of depleted uranium in tungsten, as penetrator materials was led by Richard Davitt in 1980. Depleted uranium had a near equal cost, was far less safe than tungsten, and requires a host of special handling instructions. Cost comparison of equivalent depleted uranium and tungsten ca cartridges was conducted. The unit cost of each version was found to be approximately equal. While the raw materials cost of tungsten and depleted uranium may be similar, the Army has to create safety measures to comply with the danger they have potential to cause. Little if any special controls are required during the manufacture and testing of tungsten. While each step is deployment, chain must be analyzed from a worst case safety and environmental standpoint for the depleted uranium. Tungsten penetration tends to break into pieces in the nose area or along its length. The mechanical properties of the rod can be manipulated or the front of the rod can be designed to include penetrators, preferential notches, etc. All in an attempt to minimize breaking the rod. Tungsten has the capability to penetrate as well as deplete uranium, but is ignored as a viable weapon. NATO has openly stated that there is a concern for the possible hazard of the open use of DU in battle. The use of depleted uranium could be causing harm to troops or their civilian backup. Their concern shows that there should be at the very least a committee to designate safety measures. However, they have made it clear that. Let me now underline that there is no link of any kind that has been discovered between the very low levels of radiation found in depleted uranium and the contracting of leukemia. According to NATO, the lack of connection between a common cancer and depleted uranium completely removes any sense of danger from their use. Depleted uranium has been proven to emit radiation, which does cause cancer and birth defects. The fact that it emits less than ordinary uranium does not free the material of responsibility. The overall cost of depleted uranium and tungsten is roughly equal. This is due to the inexpensive cost of depleted uranium but the high cost of the cartridge. DU being approximately 10 to 30 times cheaper. Over time, depleted uranium is shown to have a higher cost of disposal. A life cycle analysis considers demilitarization cost or value. The depleted uranium cartridge is found to be 7% higher. However, over a long time period, the theoretical returns on the use of DU give it support financially. Theoretical reimbursement in 20 to 30 years, the reality of a significant acquisition cost difference gives the depleted uranium a favorable balance. For an army that has billions of dollars at its disposal, the price should not be a major selling point for a weapon. The United States should refuse to use depleted uranium munitions in future conflicts because despite their tactical advantages, the consequences that linger forward destroy the environment, harm innocence, and spread on a global scale. The innovation of depleted uranium turned tank warfare obsolete. However, it cannot be overlooked that despite its performance, this irradiated heavy metal is too dangerous to employ in open combat. The effects of depleted uranium are difficult to discern globally. If their use is continued, they will become obvious, and at that point there will be no turning back.